basically how long should a nutrient be taken be taken well some nutrients are foundational for the patient's physiology and may require lifelong supplementation common examples of this are often based on genetic variants or SNPs single nucleotide polymorphisms for example the 5-MTHF supplement or the methyl B12 supplement related to the SNPs we talked about in the immune session one there could be also immune system genetic weaknesses where maybe a patient just doesn't have they just don't have enough uh, uh, ability to produce, say, interleukin-10, for example, and they may need interleukin-10 supporting substances their whole life, just for example, something we'll talk about in the next webinar. So how long should a nutrient be taken? taken? Some nutrients are temporary given to restore normal levels of the nutrient, like red blood cell supporting nutrients since the life of a red blood cell is basically four months. You want to give iron, B12, folic acid, B6, whatever else is necessary, sometimes molybdenum, copper, as we mentioned, any of the nutrients that support B, uh, red blood cell production, you want to give it for four months so the body gets a full complement of healthy and uh, uh, mature red blood cells. So you give it for four months to make sure you've got that, that taken place. They may need it longer, but you want to give it for at least four months. Vitamin B complex, there are studies that show that a patient who gets completely depleted in vitamin B could require as much as nine months to replete vitamin B to its uh, full, uh, full levels of body uh, body uh, stores. And then stress-related nutrients. How long do you take stress-related nutrients? Well, until the stress is alleviated, basically. If you're supporting the adrenals, for example, or other organs related to stress, using vitamin C for that, or whatever you're using, uh, panathenic acid or things for the adrenals, uh, you, you give them until the stress is alleviated, so which means some patients, they may be taken for a long, long time. Some patients may be taken for a short period of time. And that's, again, a clinical judgment. Uh, when you're saying vitamin B complex, you're talking about the entire complex, not just B. Right, yes. We're talking about vitamin B complex. The study that was done was some years ago. I think it was, might have been done at National Institutes of Health. It was a long time ago, so I don't remember. But they actually took these volunteers and they made them vitamin B complex depleted. They robbed them for that for a while, and then they put it back in. And the, the study was on vitamin B complex, all the B vitamins, and it wasn't, uh, as I recall, um, I don't recall any particular B vitamin. If it was a B vitamin, it would have been thiamine and they did the study on, but they um, they found that the B vitamins would require as long as nine months. Now, not everybody's going to require that much, but if you completely deplete a person, they're going to take longer to replete and replenish. Okay. But that could be, I think, any part of the B complex. And um, that you just, again, that's why, that's why you just have to, you know, follow a patient for a while and maybe after a while they can stop something. And the one way I know how to stop something is, you stop giving because their patient's doing better, and you test them the next time they came in, and it doesn't strengthen them anymore, then you can keep them off it. It starts to strengthen them again. Maybe they need it long term. Maybe it's a genetic thing. Maybe it's a stress-related thing. But for whatever reason, that's the one way I know to do that. There are other people who have other systems, but I haven't found anything that works as well as just using clinical judgment and then stopping the patient when you think they're okay and then testing them down the road for the same thing. You stop them next office visit or a couple office visits later. Do you have anything to add to that, Dr. McCord? Uh, no, I see that frequently as well, and I'll often um, advise other physicians who have called me regarding dosage and how long to uh, a nutrient should be taken, and say, you know, sometimes you just have to stop the nutrient and see if how the patient responds two, three, four weeks downstream, and if they respond consistently to that nutrient over and over again, they may have to take it long term. Um, maybe for, us, for the rest of their lives, maybe in lower dosages than your therapeutic dose initially. But you, again, you have to make that therapeutic judgment. So right. similar kind of. Okay, great. So when a nutrient has adequate circulating levels, oral testing won't strengthen. So you know, if, if a patient's got enough, but they still need it, they're not going to strengthen. However, the patient may require continuous supplementation to counter the effects of ongoing stressors and or to build up reserves. So again, clinical judgment is always important. As much as, as some, sometimes we'd like to have easy fit snap on gimmicks and, and rules and therapies, you still have to be the doctor. You still have to be the clinician and make the decisions, the tough decisions the doctor has to make based on the diagnosis and clinical observations. And um, the clinical judgment becomes the bottom line in all these things. You have the tools, which are the greatest tools in the world with muscle testing and AK, um, but clinical judgment still becomes very important. Just because a patient doesn't strengthen a nutrient doesn't mean they still might not need it. But it also is a indication if they're doing better clinically that maybe it's time to stop it and do what Dr. McCorder is saying, check them, check them a few weeks down the road and see if they're doing okay without it. Absolutely. If the patient has a foundational need for a specific type of nutrient support, like a genetic or other physiological need, they may need the supplement permanently. Stopping the supplement result in recurrence of a strengthening response for the nutrient and, the, and 
and the cytokine it supports if you're testing cytokines. Um, so that's basically how long nutrients should be taken. If the problem that started it, that started the nutrient recurs, then you start the nutrient again after you stop it. The patient has a temporary need for a specific type of immune support. They may need it only for a limited period of time, for example, until T cell polarization shifts, and that could happen within one to four weeks. Thereafter, the nutrient will no longer strengthen and may even create an imbalance, as we had suggested.